Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, please do check out the description section below where I often put more information about whatever it is I'm talking about. Also, I'm going to put anything in there that I may have um, forgotten, failed to mention, or potentially if I had to change a mind, change a heart, whatever, it'll be down there in that description section. If you have any questions, comments, please put them in the comment section below. Let's get started. This video is going to be a amplifier strategy guide, so to speak, and it's pretty much going to be aimed at people that are interested in amps or kind of curious about them. You know, maybe they're new to it and, um, you know, you just want to get some information and, you know, kind of get into the mindset before you do purchase an amp. Because to be honest, when it comes to home theater equipment, it can be very confusing, especially at first. I do have a separate video where I showed how to connect amplifiers to the preamp outputs on a receiver or an integrated amp or whatever it may be, so check out that other video. So first I just want to explain these amps a little bit. This amp over here on the left is a two-channel amplifier, okay? So it has two RCA inputs, one for the right, which is red, one for the left, which is white. And this amplifier is a five channel amplifier. It's got, as you can see over here, one, two, three, four, five, all labeled. This one has RCA inputs like this one does, but this one also has the XLR inputs, okay? Over here, these are your speaker outputs. So this is where the speaker wire is going to connect to. Same here. On this amplifier, this amplifier can turn on and off a bit like a subwoofer where it can sense the signal, which is the volume that's going to be sent from your preamp outputs to these inputs. And you could set it for the sensitivity so it'll listen for lower volumes or it'll turn on with louder volumes, okay? So that's how this can turn on and off. This can also turn on and off by using the 12 volt trigger cable the same way this can turn off using the 12 volt trigger. So it, it's really going to depend on your needs. With this one, this has a switch in the front for speaker set A and speaker set B. This one does not have a switch to change speakers. So this is great if you wanna to listen to two different sets of speakers, okay? If you wanna to listen to two different sets of speakers, maybe you wanna play them both at the same time, or maybe you wanna play them separately. So for example, let's just say you have a pair of uh, bookshelf speakers and you love those bookshelf speakers with jazz music. But then you have a pair of speakers that's a floor standing pair and you love them with, with rock music, heavy rock or, or hip hop or you know whatever it might be. Um, with this, you can just switch by pressing the button in front, okay? Some amps might also have it on the uh, remote control, so it might have like an A and B. With this, it's gonna be totally dependent on your home theater receiver. So if you wanna listen to music out of all five speakers, you would set your home theater receiver to the all channel stereo mode uh, or all speaker mode. This will work with your receiver's stereo mode, it's two channel mode, um, anything that your receiver is putting out, this will do. So this is just a pass through, okay? So there's definitely a difference here. With something like this, it's only the left and right channel. With this, again, you have five. So let's just say if you have two separate preamp outputs on two different, you know, little stereo amplifiers. Well, you could hook up one here, one here from one, and one here and here from the other because each of these is its own independent channel, okay? So just keep that in mind. Also, with something like this, you're gonna have some additional flexibility based on these uh, preamp outputs, which I'm going to get into as, as I go through the list. The first thing on my list is ask yourself if you've been unhappy with your current speakers. Sometimes it's not the speaker it's actually the amplifier because the amplifier is gonna play a huge role in the tonal quality of the speaker because each of these right here, they sound very different. The type of sound that they put out with 
speakers is different. This one is very laid back and pulled back in that um, mid-range, that snare drum, that vocal area. And this one is much more forward with it. And the tonal quality of each is also a bit different. Okay, so this is going to affect the speakers that you currently have. Also, because if you have been running a home theater receiver or maybe something that's lower powered, look at the manufacturer's suggested recommended wattage range. I'm gonna use this speaker as an example, okay? So I'm gonna make up some fictional numbers now. So let's just say this speaker is rated at 25 watts minimum and 150 watts is typically more so the maximum range. Now manufacturers always have a suggested power range, okay? This speaker is not going to sound as good at 25 watts as it will at 150 watts. Of course, you know, the quality of the um, sound from amplifier to amplifier is going to vary. So, you know, if, if an amplifier is putting out 150 watts, but it's a really terrible uh, um, sounding amp, okay, it's not going to sound, you know, as good as an amplifier that's putting out, um, you know, 100 watts or 125 watts, but has a very good sound quality, okay, because there are some terrible amps out there. If everything is the same, you know, the 150 watts is going to sound much better and it's going to really take this speaker and, you know, make it sound its best. Okay, so that's just something to consider because many times it's not the speaker, it's the fact that you need an amplifier. The next thing, your current receiver or integrated amp, whatever it may be, a stereo receiver, so does it have preamp outputs, okay? Because you're gonna need preamp outputs in order to connect it to a amplifier. If not, it might have XLR, but usually XLR comes with preamp outputs. So usually the first thing that you'll get is gonna be preamp outputs, then it's usually um, XLR is, is going to be in there. Some amplifiers are going to accept the actual speaker output, the speaker wire input. Um, you know, there's really not too many of them, but you know, they are out there. But typically what you wanna do is you wanna look for the RCA preamp output on your amplifier. So make sure that you have that. Okay, so the next thought is how many speakers are going to need the amp's help? Are they large speakers? Are they, you know, big speakers that you know, stand on the floor or are they small little speakers like this? What you wanna do is, you know, you wanna plan in advance for something like this. So typically, if you have a home theater receiver and you're going to add on an amplifier, you know, you're not going to use the amplifier to power this, this little guy here. You know, you're just not going to. You're going to use it to power those big speakers, you know, the big uh, tower speakers or the center channel speakers. Um, you know, maybe the bookshelf speakers that are much larger. So typically not so much as your height channels or your little satellite channels. But if your whole system is little satellites, then of course, you know, then you're gonna have to use it for these. But what you wanna do is, you know, you wanna take a look at your speakers, look at the manufacturer's suggested power recommendations, and then decide which amplifier is going to be right for you and which amp you need. Are you going to be expanding channels on a home theater receiver? So, so let's just say if this was a receiver and this has seven channels of built-in power, but it has preamp outputs for nine channels and it can process those nine channels with surround sound formats. What you'll do is you'll purchase an amplifier, okay? So if it's only two, let's just say that, that the, uh, the power that's built in is seven channels, but it could do nine. Well, you could just come over here and purchase something like this that's perfect for two channels, add it on, and you're good. Or you could come over to something like this and say, well, this one does five channels. I'm going to add the uh, two extra channels from the preamp output to expand. I'm going to go from seven channels to nine, and I'm going to connect one over here and one over here. Then I'm going to use this also for some other channels 
that are um, you know lower uh, powered, such as the large front speakers and the center channel, and you know the other large front speaker or whatever it might be. So really, what you're doing is you're using this to expand on the amount of channels that your receiver will be able to um, process, and also your you're giving three of the speakers that you currently have hooked up, you're giving them more power and better power than what the receiver offers. There are a lot of receivers as well that, that can do nine channels with the built-in amp, and then you could expand to 11. Some of them have 11 channels that's built in of, uh, of power, and then you could expand to 13. So just you know, take a look at your owner's manual and make sure that you have these features before you go and purchase any amplifier because you really do want to plan out, um, uh, plan ahead well. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about a preamp. Maybe the route that you don't want to go is a receiver. You know, you want, you want power that's dependable power, uh, dedicated power, stronger power. So you decide to purchase a preamp. When you purchase a preamp, a preamp it's almost like a receiver because it has the processing in it and it has all the RCA connectors. It has, um, uh, what is it, the um, coaxials, the optical digitals, uh, the HDMIs. It has all that stuff in the preamp. But it doesn't have the actual amplifier in it. So it can't power any speakers. And the reason for doing that is typically to kind of separate things and potentially have sound quality that's better. Okay, that's, that's kind of the logic behind it. So then what you're going to need is an amplifier. So you're gonna to have to figure out how many channels the preamp supports and match it up to how many amplifiers you might need. So let's just say if it does a total of seven, well, this is a five channel amp right here, and this is a two channel amp here. So you could, you know, potentially use something like this plus something like this, or, you know, potentially try to find something that's of the same brand that has a similar um, uh, tonal quality so the speakers don't sound too off. Unless, of course, if you have speakers that are maybe um, uh, brighter sounding speakers or they're kind of very warm sounding speakers, then you could use an amplifier such as something like this which would be great for speakers that are, that are just very bright. You know, you've been using them for a while and you know, you really just don't like them. You know, they're so sharp sounding. They're so, you know, kind of ear piercing with that brightness. Then potentially, you know, purchasing an amp like this, which is very warm sounding, can help to compensate and make those speakers sound pleasant. Okay, but that's something that you have to experiment with a bit. So that is another reason for purchasing an amplifier. I kind of just, I was talking and I uh, blended that one in. You know, the tonal quality of the speaker, when you do have, you know, speakers that are very, very bright sounding, very sharp sounding, and, you know, they're kind of giving you a headache, then, you know, you want to look for something that's, that's very warm sounding. If the speaker is very warm sounding, kind of dull sounding, then you want something that's a little bit brighter, um, maybe a little bit more forward sounding, whatever it might be. Okay, the next reason would be if you're thinking about starting from scratch, but you have a limited budget. So let's just say you have a budget and this budget is like $3,000, right? Well, you could purchase a home theater receiver that has preamp outputs for maybe $1,000 or maybe $1,500, you know, whatever it might be. And then from there, purchase an amplifier to add on. So really what you're doing is you're going to be using some of the power that's in that home theater receiver to power smaller speakers, okay? So the home theater receiver is going to power smaller speakers and the amplifier is going to purchase, excuse me, is going to power larger speakers, okay? So really what you're doing is, you know, you're kind of saving on, on some cash there because preamps are expensive. And if you look at the price of them, I think some of the cheapest ones that I saw that were like multi-channel are like around 2,500. So, you know, you can go and purchase a home theater receiver and kind of have a, you know, like a nice, in the middle balance there. 
it might not sound as good as the preamp will. Well, who knows? Maybe it will. You know, it's, it's really a matter of opinion. But, you know, it's going to save some money there. And then that way, you know, you might only need like a five-channel um, amplifier because the receiver is going to be powering two or four of the other speakers. So just keep that in mind because something like this, for example, that costs like 1400 combining that with a um, receiver with preamp outputs that might cost 800 or 1000 or whatever, you know, that's going to that's going to keep you in that under $3000 price range. Next reason is to take some load off of the receiver. So that kind of that kind of goes back to what I was saying previously. When you're adding a amplifier, your receiver does not have to power those very large speakers because the amplifier is doing it. So most receivers are rated at two channels, okay? But when you run it in five channel mode, nine channel mode, the power is dropping. So a receiver like Marantz has a 70% power guarantee in two five channels. So what that means is it's guaranteeing that at minimum you're going to get at least 70% of the two channel rating into five channels. Okay, but it is dropping down. So for example, uh, the one I have is 125 watts times two. And I believe that's about when I put it through the calculator, I think it was like 87 and a half watts or something like that I came up with, with it running in five channel mode right? and it's dropping down. But then when it goes into nine channel mode, how much is it then? I mean, am I getting 60 watts a channel? Uh, am I getting 50 watts? You know, I don't, I don't know. This is just speculation, but using something like this, I'm not going to be dropping down into like nine channel mode or, you know, whatever it is on the receiver, because this is going to be powering five. So this is going to be taking some of the weight off of the receiver and it should help to maximize the, um, the power output of the receiver. So that's just something, you know, to keep in mind as well, because when it comes to purchasing an amplifier, there is a lot of reasons to, uh, you know, to own one. The last on my list is if you want to take a speaker and buy amp it. So if you want to buy amp a speaker, this is something that you have to do in your receiver's um, menu. So you got to go into your receiver's menu and, you know, read the, actually, let me back up, read the instruction manual for your home theater receiver first on how to buy amp it because you don't want to screw it up. Okay. So with that said, you can use an amplifier to buy amp a speaker. And using an amplifier, of course, is going to give that speaker the most uh, power, uh, the most wattage. Whether the bi amp is going to show that it sounds any better than if it wasn't bi amped, you know, that's really just a guessing game. <laughs> you know, that's something that, you know, you're going to have to decide how you feel about it. You know, try to play a speaker without it being bi amped and then play that speaker with it bi amped and decide which is right for you. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a great day.